all right so welcome back again my name is jesse and in this one of tutorial we're trying to do a very simple protein analysis of covid 19 using biopython so first of all in case you don't have biopython and you want to install it on your system just go with pip install biopython so what is biopython so biopython is a very nice package that is very useful in case you are in the photo of genomics or maybe bioinformatics right it allows you to be able to do simple sequence analysis as well as protein synthesis and then gives you the option of being able to query and then access bioinformatics database such as entrance blast gen bank so most in mostly most cases people who are in this field they go to this powerful database pdb that is protein database R rcsb which is a very very powerful database to do whatever you want to do right or you can just go to the almighty ncbi which is a very very powerful stuff in which you can check for the nucleotides you can check for several dna and genomics and all of these things when you search for it but with biopython gives you the option of interfacing with it and then querying and accessing this particular powerful database so we'll be trying to see how to work with biopython briefly as a crash course then we move on to our main task of analyzing covid 19 or coronavirus so let's start with it so as as i said for bi you can use biopython to do Protein synthesis or sequence analysis. So we start with our sequence analysis, then protein synthesis. So what is protein synthesis? Let me bring here. So this is my face. You also have not seen my face before. <laughs> okay, so this is simple explanation of protein synthesis, which is in which you are converting a DNA into a protein, right? Or amino acid. So these are these alphabet A, A, T, C, G, they are the nucleotides. So this is how it is. So the A stands for adenine guanine cytosine thymine so this is for dna but for rna we have thymine being replaced with uracil right so if you have a dna that is the dna in your body or dna in every living organism will be converted to a messenger rna by transcription then to be translated into a protein so these are the proteins right these are the amino acids or polypeptides peptides protein so let's that is the basic idea so we'll try and see how to do the same thing in this stance so let's start working on it so be important bio bio right import bio and you see the various methods and various features that bio has to offer us right so it's going to be something like this so dir bio then if i check this it's going to give us the alphabet so the alphabet here stands for the particular type of way in which you create your sequence right so we have several of them we'll be discussing them later and these are the basic stuff you can we have the sequence to enable us to create sequence we have data and then several other aspects this is the basic idea so let's start and see how to create a sequence we'll be trying to see how to work with sequence so to work with sequence just go with from bio dot sec as you saw here we had the sec here right it is stand for sequence so in case you want to create a sequence or work with sequence you have to import it so import sequence right that is the basic idea now to create a simple sequence because i want to create a sequence let's go to create a sequence so this is everything from scratch so we make a lot of mistakes so let's start so it's going to be in case i want to create a simple sequence let's say dna right a simple dna sequence I'll just go with s e q right then i'll pass in my nucleotides so this is going to be my nucleotide which is the same nucleotide we have for here right this same thing a a t g a right that's the same thing that we have here very interesting so in case i want to create a sequence this is how to create a sequence very interesting so down this is a simple sequence so if i go with dna and it's a simple sequence right but in case i want to check for the particular type of sequence it is because i did not specify it if i go with dna dot alphabet right so dot alphabet dot alphabet c <laughs> dot alphabet it's going to tell me that it's alphabet generic alphabet but there are different types of alphabet so the alphabet specify the type of D dna sequence you ha we have so you can have generic dna or generic rna you can have a generic protein you can have an iupac the national union of whatever whatever <laughs> for either unambiguous or ambiguous so it is better that mostly when you are trying to create a sequence you specify the alphabet the advantages of using the alphabet is to enable us to constrain the information so that we know that we are working with this particular type of dna right and then also to help us save us a means of type checking so let's see how to create a simple alphabet so that is not create but make it more informative so it's going to be something like this so the same thing that we had so in this case it's going to be my sequence then i'll pass in my dna 
right this is the dna that i'm using it has specified that one but before we do that let's import it so i have to import it first so it's going to be from bio dot alphabet bio dot alphabet alphabet right remember that alphabet was part of it then i'll just going to import generic so i can import generic dna and also import generic rna can also import generic protein right so and then i can't spell protein <laughs> protein so this is how it is right see how i spelled protein okay so that is something simple that you want to do so it's going to import these particular stuff so by this i can create a specific dna sequence so let's try that one now so in that case it's going to be this there's a dna so it's going to be generic dna if i run this no now this is perfect so if i go back to dna it's going to tell me that this is the particular sequence right and then it is having a, a type of, of our alphabet as a dna very very interesting that is how to work with it so if i check for the type of this stuff dna it's going to tell me that it's a sequence right then in case i want to check for the particular dna sequence that is to check for the dna sequence type right in that case if i go with my dna dot alphabet alphabet this time i'm not going to make a mistake perfect so by this you can see that this is a dna alphabet very very interesting the same thing can be done in case you're working with rna or and then are you pack and then all of these things you just change it from here and it's something very simple i need a basic idea about it now let's see how to do some simple sequence manipulation so this is uh, operating like a string right it's operating like a string so if I print it like this, you can see that this is like a string, right? So I can actually manipulate it like a string, but this type of strings are immutable, except you convert it to mutable. So let's see how to work with it. So I'm just going to come back to this place. And let's see some basic stuff you can do. So you can just do slicing. So this is my DNA, right? In case I want to get only the first value. So let's, in case I want to get A, T, G, right? I can just go straight away with, let's say zero to three. So I go with zero to three, can see that now it has printed a ATG, right? Perfect. So you can actually slice them, and because you can slice them, you can change them, you can do mutation, substitution, all of these things, substitution, mutation, all of these things, right? Addition, deletion, you can do all of these things because of the sli slicing. You can also join two sequences together. So let's create another sequence. So let's call this one as sequence two, right? Then I'll just create another sequence. So this is going to be the same sequence that we are using, but I'll change it to something like let's change this one let's go back right sequence i don't know whether you can see it well i hope you can see it very well i know whether it's too big right let's take it like this <laughs> then this is our sequence i'm going to change it from this to t g right something like that so i've changed this this is a different sequence now so in case i want to join them together i can actually join them together by going my dna and i want to join the first three values then i can also join it with my sequence too right it's also going to work perfectly right this side has changed it and added these ones to this so you can actually join them together it was you also want to find a codon in a sequence how do you do that so i want to find a codon in a sequence so in that case it's going to be let's say find codon so the codon stands for three ways right or three ways eight, three nucleotides so three three nucleotides right so let's first of all find a nucleotide nucleotide count right so i want to find the number of nucleotides within a particular sequence so in that case it's going to be my dna that i had then i'll just go with my count so i want to find the number of adenine nucleotides so it's going to be a if i go with this it's going to count it perfectly for us so we have four so if i check the previous one that we had this is adding let me name it here this is adding sequence right so and then this is the same thing that we had so we had this one so in case i want to check for the number of a nucleotides right you have a one two three four right so we have four so that's why it gives us as four and that's how to find a, a nucleotide count within your sequence very very interesting you can also do another one like dna to find codon to find a codon the codon is three nucleotides right so three nucleotides Something like this. So in case I want to, I also want to do the same thing. I can also do the same thing by coming back to the same place. Go with DNA. 
dot count now passing the particular nickel that I want so let's say I want ATG right it's going to count it perfectly for us so I have only one ATG there right I have only one ATG there I can also do the same thing for let's say two so you can try that one for just two codon I don't know how, what I, how we call it so let's take for TC right so TC if you check from here TC is having about two so if I go that it's going to count it as two very interesting that is how to find a codon right where the number of nucleotides within your stuff very simple and very nice now again you can also check with the entire length of all the codons it's going to be the length of your sequence right the normal way by going with length then my dna is going to bring it bring it out perfectly fast which is 12 right 12 nucleotides very simple and very nice so this is how to count it to find a codon count and then a nucleotide count but in case you want to find the location of a particular codon so let's call this find the location or position of a nucleotide right let's make it in so how do you do the same thing we did any then go with find then i'll pass in the particular so in case i want to find the particular the nucleotide g guanine we determine that it is fine at number two that is the first occurrence so from here you can see that it's zero one two right very simple so you can use this one to do some interesting stuff so that is something simple about the manipulation there's also some other stuff you can also do you can also do an overlap count so overla overlap count so in that case it's going to be my dna dot count overlap then i'll pass in the particular stuff i want to count right so let's say i want to count say gt it's going to tell me that's having only one right very interesting that's some of the things that you can also do you can also do index and all of these things so that is something simple about the manipulation of a sequence now let's see how to do a simple protein synthesis right so we learned previously that to do a simple protein synthesis you just have your dna then you transcribe it right transcription means writing a message then you transcribe it into mrna right then you translate it right into a protein that is the basic idea as we saw from our first picture above right the same thing so notice this one very well we're trying to compare what you have done so let me copy this one so that we will compare it right so that's something simple so let's go back and then try and see how to do our simple protein synthesis of, of what you have done so far so we had our dna sequence as this this was our DNA sequence. We want to be able to translate it. So this, first of all, do some stuff. So first of all, we will, first of all, we transcribe, right? So in transcription, transcription means that you are converting a DNA to a messenger RNA, right? That is the meaning of transcription. So we have our DNA here. So in case you want to transcribe, just go with two. Just go with transcribe. So this is going to transcribe it into a DNA right into an mRNA so it's going to replace all the timing with URSL because that is RNA RNAs don't have timing they have URSL in placement of T right so that is see that has converted it to if you check if I go back and I check what we had previously this stuff here you can see that it has actually done it for us so that means that what we are doing is actually correct right if I go back and I check here that now this is the stuff that's done so a u g a u c right if you can notice the same thing that we have here very nice so that's how to convert dna to mrna now let's see how to also translate so in case i have my mrna this is my simple stuff so let's copy this one here and let's call this one as mrna right so this is mrna because i want to translate my mrna the translation means that i'm converting the messenger rna to a polypeptide or a protein right a protein or an amino acid or a not a a for short so in case you want to do that the simplest we just go with my error m rna right the one that you have transcribed then i just go to translate i'm going to translate now it's going to translate it into a protein or an amino acid so we have m i and x so this is the amino acid so this is giving us this asterisk is the stop codon in case you want to use this asterisk as a stop codon you want to use your own you can just do the same thing here and specify it here so let's go with this stop symbol right 
and I'll pass in a particular symbol. So let's say I want to use the robot, right? So if I go with this, now I'm going to use the robot. So that is how to change the stop codon, right? Very, very nice. So that's how to convert a simple DNA, right? You have converted a simple DNA with this into this RNA. You have transcribed it, then you have translated it, and it's given us as MIS, which is met, alien, and serenin, right? This is exactly the same thing, give us. So that is how to do a simple DNA analysis, protein analysis, right? By converting protein synthesis, rather, converting a simple DNA to an, an amino acid or a polypeptide. Now, let's move on to the next aspect of actually trying to do our tax right before we do a structure so this is going to be our main analysis of COVID-19 right so we'll be trying to do it from here but, but before we move on this was a stop code on right so to get a table of all the translations all the combinations can just come back to this place let's try that one out so in that case it's going to be let's say from it's going to be our say view codon codon table right to view the table you can just do it straight away with this so from bio the data remember that there was also a data stuff import our codon table right something very simple so it's going to import codon table and then from this place you can do a lot of things if i check for my codon table table can see that now so it's having an alphabet having several of them right several other tables so codon table alphabet and all of these things so in case i want to pick a specific stuff i can also do the same thing to, to view it out so that is going to be print right then i'll pass in my codon table right then i'll specify let's say in case i want unambiguous right so we had unambiguous here also we have ambiguous ambiguous followed all of these things we also have unambiguous dna by name ambiguous then we have unambiguous right so you can also do it by let's say by name so if i want to get for a dna for our rna all of them is inbuilt right so like you need to go in into your browser to search for it you can just copy this one here let's try it out so I'll paste it here right by name then by name i can give it standard i want the standard one so standard so if i go with this now it's going to print it out perfectly for us they're very simple so this is for dna right very very nice so this is how it's going to be for the codons and the arrangement for them very simple and very nice you can also do the same thing for rna so this is going to be for dna and then this is going to be for rna so this is going to be for rna right so in that case i'll just change this one to amigo stable for rna rna right Perfect, right? See that this is URL. So that is something very interesting that you can do. So you can just get a lot from here. Now, before we move on, less we were able to see how to translate it, but you can also also do complement, reverse complement, and all of this. And so let's try that one out. So this is going to be here. Let's do something simple. So in case I want to get the complement, so complement is we have AT, GC, right? So that is the complement. So these are joining together, right? So three and then five right so eighty gc so that is the basic idea about the complement so in case i want to do a complement for my dna i can also do that for the RNA, i can also do that so let's try that one out so let's do that one so we had our dna here right this was a dna in case i want to get the complement so that means that it's going to pair them up in a very nice format so in that case it's going to be my dna dot complement then with this option is going to give us the complement right that now that's changes so eighty gc so eighty T A G C right. This is this is a complement. So it's pairing them together. So this this way and then this way. That is a complement. You can also do a reverse complement of something that you have, right? In that case, it's going to be the same thing, but it's going to turn it the other way around. So this is going to be our reverse complement. So reverse complement. Complement. So the complement is going to help us to know the complete DNA, right? In case you want to know the complete DNA, how it's going to be synthesis so it's going to be my reverse so it's going to be dna right dot reverse complement so this reverse complement is going to take the same thing here but reverse it so this is going to be the first and this is going to be the last the tta g is the first 
ATT. ATT is the last day. That is the basic idea behind the reverse complement. So we have seen how to do some interesting stuff. So just as we could transcribe from DNA straight away, right? From you can transcribe from a DNA to an mRNA. You can also translate a DNA straight away to a protein, right? You can also do the same thing. So we can also do this, do a direct translation. That's going to go behind the scenes and do all of them. So this is going to be a straight. It's going to direct translation, right? To amino acid. So in that case, it's going to be my DNA. Then I go to translate. There's also going to do the same thing, right? MIS, perfect. So you can also do it perfectly. You can also do, a, how do you call it? Back transcription. So we had our mRNA, right? Which was the one we created. In case I want to get it as a DNA, right? So let's convert an mRNA to a DNA. So we're converting an mRNA to the normal DNA, right? So in that case, it's going to be my mRNA, then back trans like you can back transcribe so back transcribe so i'm going to convert it back to the initial one right so this is what it has and has converted to the initial one that we had which was the same thing so if i compare it you can see that if i do the same thing so going to be the same thing right so let's compare this one and give us as true right. perfect right so you can do a back transcription right very very interesting that is the basic idea behind working with BioPython for simple protein synthesis and a simple sequence analysis, right? It's very interesting. There are a lot of things you can do, but let's move on to our main task of working with coronavirus, right? So let's start with it. So this is going to be our analysis of coronavirus. So we will be starting from scratch. Right, so let's start with it. Okay, perfect. So let's start with it. So first of all, to get the DNA, right? The actual DNA to work with, can just go back to the database. So let me bring this one down here. Right, so we just go to the gen bank. Oh, right, then from here, even when you do it, because we are already in a crisis, when you come here, you can already see it here, right? So you can just click on it, so it's going to lead you to that particular stuff, or you can search for it, right? You can search for it, and it's going to give it to us. So this is it, right? Very, very interesting. So this is what we're trying to work with. So to come into this place, you can just come back and you see the various, let me make it bigger so that you can see it very well. So these are all the various nucleotide sequence for coronavirus right so but it's a complete genome i don't know whether i can see it very well hope you can see right so, so this is it so this is the one we are using which is a complete one and it's coming from china and this was the collection date so the other ones there's some from philippines some from japan this is also a complete one which was in january this is another one from J Ma from february then this is a recent one right so you can see the various sequence that people have done for you so what you do is I just click on this one so let's use the complete one from china right perfect then it's going to open it for us so when it opens for us like this you can see it in this particular format so it's going to give us some information about it so this is the faster format so we have several formats we have faster format we have several other format but this is how the faster option goes by right this this is in this case here now this is a gen bank format right but the faster format is going to be in the format of only these ones only this is the translation only the uh, amino acids right so something very interesting which is quite long so let's copy this one to copy just come back to this place perfect so you can just download it from here right something very interesting now let's see i've already downloaded it, so we work on it straight away I just come back to the same place so this is these are this so this is for the gen bank right so this is how the gen bank looks like as i said earlier on but what we need is that we have several formats so the simplest format is the faster format so i just go back to this place faster right i click on the faster here i don't know whether i can see it well faster right so i click on this faster here then it's going to lead me to the faster format so this format is the previous format was a gen bank format this is the faster format right so the faster format is going to give us the format of the nucleotides all these dna nucleotides very interesting then to download it you just go back to send to here at the top here then you can just select this as maybe complete records coding sequence all of these things right coding sequence right then you can specify the particular stuff here so you can just specify the one that you want then you create file it's going to download it for you then you can be able to do and there's going to be a tst file can also get it in the format of a sequence file so 
complete record let's go with file then you can just get in a format of faster right here then you just click on create then it's going to create this faster format right so you can get it as a tst file which is going to be this one here or you can get it as a faster file so the recommended way is to get it as a faster file so you come to the send to select the complete record select the file then you just select the format so there are several formats there's a genbank format as i said there's sml which is old oh, kick. <laughs> there's then we have the faster format which is what you're supposed to use then you click on the create file right perfect so let's see how to work with it so i'll just come back here so i already have it here right sequence faster so let's work on it i can also i've also renamed it to covered sequence faster so it can be any of them so let's work with it straight away so to read it we'll be using to load our fast to load our faster sec our form our file it's going to be something like this very simple it's going to be from bio import sec io right so this is sec io to help us to pass our file and then we will load our file so in loading our file is going to be let's say four there are several ways you can do that but the simplest way that you can use preview it so let's preview it so for record in my sec io dot pass then I'll pass in the particular file. So the what I'm going to be passing in is going to be my file. So this is what we downloaded, right? So it's going to be my sequence faster to sequence, right? Sequence dot faster. Perfect. That is the first argument. Then the second argument is going to be the type, the file format, would be faster format. Perfect. So, so that is how to work with it. Very simple right and from here i can just go it for for recording sequence i'm going to pass it open it and i can read it out so i can print out the record id i can't spell record <laughs> so if i do it it's going to give us see it's going, it's going to find the file sequence see what i did <laughs> sequence i o it is not i one so this is the same name that we found here the same name here right so that is the id the same name right very simple so now let's that is how to get the record id now i can also get every information about it without passing it passing an id and just go with this i'm going to print everything for us so the id name the name the description so, so that you can get a description of what it is right very interesting and very nice as well as the sequence that is something very nice something very simple now we have seen how to preview it now let's open it and save it inside a particular file and record it so we'll be doing analysis so first of all let's pass it inside our file so i'm going to create a variable called and called for corona then i'll pass it in. i'll pass in my sequence so let's call this one as our record then from here i'll just go with my sequence io dot read so you can pass it or you can read it perfectly and when i'm reading i'm going to pass in my sequence dot faster i didn't the file perfect now supply the file format faster so now it's going to save it inside this particular variable call and curve record right so so you'll be rushing <laughs> So in case you are not subscribed to this channel, you can also subscribe and check the link below for some interesting materials to help you master machine learning and then Python. So let's click on this here, right, to make it look nice. Okay, let me bring myself up <laughs> so it doesn't confuse us. Okay, that's something very simple. So we have it like this. So I go with record. It's going to be the same thing that we have, right? The same information in the format of a sec record format. So I can actually get a sequence only. From it can get the id from it can get the name from it right so i can just go with to get a sequence i can also do the same thing so let's save it as a sequence so let's call this one as ncorp dna right so this sequence is a dna as you already know because the alphabet is this is a dna that you're working on so it's going to be my ncorp our record dot sec right which is going to be the sequence perfect now if i go back and i print it out COVID our DNA that you have so it's going to be like this so and call DNA perfect you can see that it is quite a lot right so this is all the nucleotides for coronavirus very interesting that is the first step now in case I want to actually get the length of 
the number or the length of our sequence, right? So that is going to be my length, then I'll pass in my n curve DNA. We're going to print it out perfectly for us. Wow, that's 29,000, quite a lot. So let's see some interesting stuff you can do with this, what we have so far. So what we'll be doing that first of all we'll be trans translating. We'll be doing a simple protein and protein synthesis, right? Synthesis. So we'll be we will take the DNA, then we convert the DNA to mRNA, then convert the mRNA to a, an amino acid or a protein, right? Protein. Or A, right? For amino acid. So let's see how to do that. That's the simplest stuff. So just like we saw in the picture here. This same this long ago picture. I don't know whether you remember this picture that we had, right? So that's what you're trying to do. This same thing. Or this same thing. So we are going to take the COVID DNA, transcribe it into mRNA, translate it into a protein. Right. So let's go back and see what to do with it. So it's going to be very simple. So like it's going to be let's do it. First of all, we're going to do our transcription. Transcription means that you're converting from DNA to mRNA. Right. So let's work on it. So it's going to be very simple. We have our N curve DNA. In case I want to transcribe it, I'm just going to transcribe. I'm going to transcribe it perfectly for us. So this is our mRNA. So I can equate this one to mRNA for COVID. So let's call this N curve mRNA. Right, perfect. Now we have done some interesting stuff about it. We can also check for the number of this, the stop codons, all of these things. So since we have transcribed it, let's convert it from. Let's see it first. So if you check the previous one that we had, which was the N curve DNA, you know that this was ATT, right? But for transcription, the tiamine is converted to uracil because it's a RNA, so AUU instead of ATT. That means that everything is on track. So let's see some other stuff. So let's do the next one of translation to amino acid. AA amino acids or polypeptides or protein, right? Anyhow you call it. So to do that, you can just go with the same thing that we have done. So this is going to be our protein to n curve. It's called n curve protein. In that case, it's going to be my n curve mRNA dot translate translate. We're going to translate into a protein for us. So it's going to give us some error, right? So this error is given us because of the stop codon. So in, in most cases, when you are doing that, you can specify the st stop codon as true, or you can do it like this. You can specify that stop stop codon true, right? You can make it true or false, right? But let's not go with this. It's another stuff you can also do. Okay, perfect. So we have gotten it. We have gotten our protein, our code number is protein. Which is working perfectly well, right? Very nice and very simple. Now, since we have gotten it, what are some of the things we can also do? We can actually do some analysis. We can check for the number of proteins there. So this is going to be the length of our protein. Protein, which is wow, quite a lot, right? So that is quite a lot, and this is it makes sense to get. It Without converting it, in case you want to get the number of protein, right? Without conversion, this is a custom method. Right? You can just, since every codon is three, every codon is three, right? So you can just take the length of it. So let's call this my length of my N curve DNA. Ah, I can't spell DNA. DNA now and divide it by three. Divided by three is going to give us the same value, right? So that is something simple that you can do. Very interesting. So we have seen how to take a simple DNA from coronavirus, then created a protein, right, from it, amino acids. 
very interesting so you can actually count the number of amino acids that we have among them which these are the number of amino acids we have right very big too much so in case you also want to find all the amino acids there you can also do that so let's try that one out so in case i want to find so the next thing we'll be doing is finding all the amino acids we'll be finding all amino acids so it's, it's simple we have n called protein and if you see from here it's having an asterisk there so you can use this asterisk to split the asterisk is the stop codon you can use to split to find all the a sequence right before I, before before a stop codon right so that is a basic idea so in that case it's going to be something very simple it's going to be my n curve protein i don't know whether somebody spells protein that way dot split now split find a stop codon right so this is going to be something very simple so i can call it as my let's call it an end curve right a -A, something like that before let's make it something like this. so if i go with this now and i check it n curve a, -A before i stop codon so these are all of them wow very very interesting right so any place it finds a stop codon is going to stop right so by this i can find the largest sequence there before a stop codon so in that case we can use several methods of doing that so let's try that one out perfect so let's try that one out so it's this give us everything like this right but in case i don't want to be getting all of this i can just print it out so i can just do something like this so let's make it like and call clean right let's go that's clean so in that case it's going to be let's create a simple stuff to so i so for i in n curve a right something like that so if i go back to n curve clean consider now this a yeah, very nice format for us it still give us the same thing so simplest way is just convert to string and it's again now this is in a better format right this is better right so you can see it better right now we can actually find the largest sequence before a stop codon so there are several ways you can do that you can do it in this way using pandas so let's try with the simplest way using pandas it's going to be but this is using pandas right there are several ways you can do that but let's try with pandas the next is going to be something like this so i'll put pandas as pd so i can commit all of these things into a data frame so let's try that one out so it's going to be pd dot read that's called csv perfect so now let's see how to work with it so in that case we have converted this one into a list so i can just create a simple dictionary let's read csv <laughs> read the data frame <laughs> data frame and now i can pass it there right so i can pass in a dictionary so let's create something very simple as let's call this one as my amino acids that's it right now passing my list of n clean Call it clean right so n curve clean so in this particular format it's going to create a very nice data frame for us and we can do a lot of things with it so df you can see it's very well right so we have our amino acid here so i can get the 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 longest sequence right before i stop codon so let's try that one now so it does give some just call it as let's say count right let's go to count then i'll pass it here as my df passing my amino acid then from here i can just go straight away to dots can just go string dot length or can just apply length any anyhow you want it to be it's still going to work so that is going to be like string dot length right so now if i go back to my df dot head you can see that we have very nice format right so this is 8 is 13 so in case i want to get the largest sequence before a stop codon so this is going to be the largest sequence before a stop codon before a stop codon right so that key is going to be like this so i'll just take the same thing that i have done so far and i'll just go with df right then i'll pass in dot n largest so the n largest first of all takes the particular number that you want so i want this i want to take this particular argument so let's pass in my number 
first so i want 10 10 largest and i'm passing my column right so amino acids give us a type error because we sp spelled it wrong we change the position i supposed to read a type <laughs> given us an error let's check it out see we are always supposed to read the error if you don't read the error you never see it right the reason giving us this error is because we are supposed to count use the not the amino acid column but the count column right that is why it's giving us all of these errors see you have to read errors <laughs> so let's go with count because count is the only one with numbers right perfect so this is it so the one with the highest is this particular sequence right before the stop column which is having about 270 two seven zero one different amino acids very very interesting right very nice so that is something simple that you can do of course you can do a lot of analysis but let's move on to we to do our 3d structure analysis right so before we move on let's count the frequency of of an uh, amino acid which of them is, is the most common right among what we have so far so we'll be using from collection there are several ways you can do that there is even a prot prot pram analysis tool that you can use to do more analysis but let's go with a simple format so from collections import counter right and use that one to help us with that so i just have my my end curve put in right this is the one that we had in case i want to count the number of eyes the number of keys these are all different amino acids I can just use a counter to help us with that so in that case it's going to be my counter I'll pass inside my counter then i'll just go with dot most common let's get the let's see the 10 most common say so zero 10 most common right so it's going to print it up perfectly so these are the 10 most common amino acids so license then you have I don't know what this one is. There is the, the stop code, and of course, the stop code and the stop part. So these are the 10 most common amino acids within our protein, right? Very, very interesting. Now let's move on to the next section of trying to plot it, right? Plot our, not plot, but rather do a 3D structural analysis of COVID. So there are several formats. So the commonest format is to use the PDB, which is the legacy format. And you also have CIM. MCIF format, right? Which is the most recent one. So to get it, just go back to this URL. So I'll click on this URL, then you can just get it, right? So this is the structure for COVID-19. COVID this is from NCBI, the same thing. Then I can actually download it. So to, to download it, just go back to this place. We have the ID, then MMB ID. So you can just download the sequence in this particular option, right? You can download it from here. This want to get a file. It's going to download the file for us. So this is the file, and then we can actually view it right inside our browser so let's work it out so to work on it is very very exciting so these are the basic requirements you have to install ng view right ngl view to help us with our 3d structure or we can use pi 3d mode we can use pi trash so these are the basic stuff to do that then in case you are working in jupyter notebook you just need this particular command to activate that and enable that particular extension right or you can just do this one inside the command command line or in case you're working on jupyter notebook can also use this particular option to help us with that right which is also going to work or then you do this one that is the basic idea so let's try it out perfect so now let's see how to work with this so i'm just going to import our parser so be important our parser to help us with that right so i'm just going to go it from bio dot pdb right put in data bank because we downloaded this particular file right pdb we'll be able to see the structure of coronavirus right so in that case i'm just going to import several passes as we learned earlier we have several passes we have the normal passer right the legacy passer pdb put in database passer or the mmcif passer which is the commonest and the most recent one with more details without a lot of errors right so that is something simple then so let's pass it out it's going to be my pdb passer simple right see what i've done <laughs> so i'm going to import it perfectly now let's see how to read it so we have our file here which is 6172b so in case i want to read it so let's read our p 
pdb file is it not pdf pdb pdb file i don't know whether you can hear me from now pdb file then from here i can just go let's go just my parser i'll initialize it pdb parser right after initializing it now i can read it as a structure so let's call that structure can be any name then i'll call just parser dot get structure right. and i'll pass in the file right i'm going to pass the file which is my the file that i downloaded which is this particular file right this file so i can copy this file or i can just i already have it here in this particular format right so you can just use the same thing which is the same thing right so it's going to be mm db underscore let's let's go sys l sys l u7 right dot put in database your data bank that is the first one that is something very simple right then i can just give it any the name that i want to give it so this is so this is the file right but it's always recommended that in case you are loading it you just give it a particular name so let's copy the same thing here that we have and give it as the name so this i'll copy this one then i'll pass that one as here so this is going to be the name that's to be used right so let's run it again hopefully it's giving us file not found because i think we made a mistake supposed to be l u right let's check the file mmdb underscore okay so we made a mistake let's copy a uh, refactor it so i'll just use this one the tab to help us with that so now it's going to work perfectly for us perfect that's finished reading it now we have our structure of our protein right there so if i go back and i go with my structure like this if i go structure it's going to be a generator which doesn't have anything but in case i want to get the number of uh, proteins in it the number of chains in it if i go with length i'm going to list it perfectly as four so we have four different chains there right and i can just go with something like this so let's call this my model then i'll just pass in my structure since this is four i can just go with structure spell structure structure the first one is the model right then i can actually iterate through that and find the number of chains there so it's going to be four chain inside my model and i can print it out so print and print my chain so it's going to give us my chain right with the id of a very interesting right something very simple something nice so you can also actually to get the number of atoms the number of residues and all of these things but let's move on and see how to do our 3d our 3d visualization so that is something very simple so there are several methods you can do that you can use the ngl view to help you to do that or you can use several other stuff to help you with that so let's work on it so in that case i'm going to import ngl view as nv right so there are several ways of working with if you are not activated the extension for jupyter lab is not going to work so you have to activate it right before it work so let's try to use it jupyter notebook to help us with that no. so i'll just change this one from here so i'll just come back here change this one to tree right that's another way it's going to change everything to tree mm, let's cancel Right, so let's cancel it and save to save it perfect so i can just change it from here to tree so we are changing it to jupyter notebook the same thing is going to convert it to jupyter notebook so it's going to see it here which is this one i click on it and to open then you see it inside jupyter notebook right otherwise you have to activate the extension for jupyter lab perfect so it has come back so this i'm using a white team so the white is clear anyway <laughs> okay so let's try it out so we have come back here right so if i i run it again and then after running it in case you want to make sure that it is working just go with 
nv.demo if this one works that means that it is working perfectly well right so nv.demo if you're able to see a structure that means that it works right if you don't see a structure that means that it's not working so you have to activate the extension i right? see so that it's working well so there's a structure so let's go on with let's take off this so it's you tell me that it's working so in case i want to do the structure for COVID, right so it's going to be our COVID 3d structure like it's going to be my end view right or oh, let's so that the variable called view and i'll pass it here as my end view dot show by python this is the first method but then i'll pass in my stuff so i'll pass in my structure so i go with this option is going to print it out perfectly for us so perfect now to view it i can just go straight away with my view it's going to load it perfectly for us so this is going to be the structure of it right you see that it's loading it in a very nice format so this is the 3d structure for COVID. let's reduce it here i think this is too big let's come back <laughs> okay so this is it right so i can zoom it you can see all the atoms that we're seeing there right all the atoms with glue seen all of these different atoms right very cool very nice this for this was for the demo but the one that you have is this one right so different colors you see that you can go back up and down very interesting and it's giving us the annotation of it right you know that i can see it's atom seven right very interesting so that is how to view this is the first method of viewing it right or viewing a file right using the end view but you have to make sure that you have activated your extension so that you're able to see it very well that's the first method now let's see the second method of working with it not using using something different just using pi 3d model 3d model so in that case first of all you just have to import it if you have not with this option of pip install pi 3d more right to install it right in case you don't have it but we are we are we have already installed it so we just move straight away to it okay now let's see how to do that so to plot this it's going to be something like this so let's call it as view one let's call the view two then i'll just go straight away with something very simple so pi 3d 3d model you have to make sure that you have imported if you have not imported it's not going to work so let's import it first pi 3d Supposed to be small m before it will be able to work then from that i can just do my view i just my view two then i'll just go with pi 3d more right then i'll first of all view it so this is going to automatically go to the website and fetch it for us right without you downloading or reading a file so this particular value that you have this this value right is what you are going to use to view that particular structure so i'll copy this one here the same value here is what we are using so i'll just come back to the same place and pass in that value here right perfect so to identify and go and fetch for it for it for us that's the first step it's giving us an error because i think we made a mistake we're supposed to query it not just supply so we have to query how do you spell query Q -U -R -Y. <laughs> right now supply the particular stuff there right perfect is working now i can view it so view two and now to set the particular style so set style so the style i'm setting is going to be of a color let's go with cartoon first so cartoon cartoon the first stuff so cartoon now supply another dictionary which is going to be of the color a specific color i want so i want it to be spec Spectrum, right so in this particular option it's going to set such as a spectrum hopefully it doesn't give us any error perfect now you see that it's working perfectly well right so i don't know whether i can see it well it's now loading it right so let's wait as it loads so if you see that it's not working right there's simply another way you can also do to help you to see it so view two 
I just go with my render in case it's, you can't see it dot render image if I go with this option this is another way of seeing it right I'm going to render that particular image as an image right in case you can't see it so it's going to take some time then there's also display image to also display it right so it's rendering the image behind the scene then after that you do whatever you want to do my system is slow apologies for that it seems that it's not working right but that is how to do it right that is something very simple so so thank you for watching this long tutorial in which our last plot couldn't work but i think it will work later on this i think my system is slow so that is the basic idea behind doing a simple protein analysis with biopython right so thank you for watching this long tutorial in case you have any question or contribution you can just put inside the comment section below and please don't forget to subscribe and check the link below for some interesting materials jesus saves bye